Welcome to Ciao Bella, hosted by me, Erica Firpo, a travel journalist based in Rome. Each episode of Ciao Bella, I sit down with Italy's creators, contemporary artists and artisans, designers, culinary experts, heritage brands, and innovative estites, and more who are defining and redefining 21st century Italy. Pull up a chair and join in. Hey, and welcome back to Ciao Bella. Today I have a special edition, Travel Bites, and I am speaking with Jess Rosbell in Modena. She's the head chef at Casa Maria Luigia, which is Massimo Bottura and Laura Gilmar's country B&B. Hey, Jess, how are you? Hello, I'm good. How are you? I'm excellent. I'm so excited to speak with you because, well, we've met a few times, but I've more than that, I've eaten your food and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. We look forward to opening up again and and serving it all again. Well, tell me a little bit about a little bit about you because I know that you're not just the chef. You have a a, a pretty long history in Modena, is that correct? Because you come yeah. from Canada, correct? Yep. So I'm born and raised in uh, Montreal, Canada. Uh, I worked there for years. I worked in Whistler, BC, um, but I've been in Modena for seven years now, um, of which five and a half I was working at Austria Franciscana. Um, I was uh, chef de partie there. Um, and then I also manage all of the international events. So a lot of traveling, pop-up restaurants, fundraisers, um, lots of traveling. And then as of last um, May, we, so May, 2019, we opened Casa Maria Luigia, which is in this beautiful 300 year old abandoned, um, home really in the countryside. It was an old agricultural, um, property that Massimo and Lara kind of purchased, um, at auction a little bit kind of by accident. Um, and then they kind of wound up with this big property and decided to transform it into this, uh, guest house, which is where we met. I had the opportunity to visit Casa Maria Luigia this past in October of 2019 and in June, the hottest June of my life of 2019. <laughs> yeah. And um, I, I, you know, one of the things and after talking with Lara a few times about Casa Maria Luigia is it's not just this b and it's like it's a gastro experience. And I had the best breakfast of my life, which I consistently and continuously tell people about at Casa Maria Luigia, thanks to you guys. And so I thought, as I'm sitting here in my house and I cannot have any of this, of course, what I crave is the Cotechino, the Spisolona, <laughs> and the Zabagione. I crave Colazione Emilia Romagna. Yep. And I thought, can you please tell everybody what this is? Because to me, it's the trifecta of everything that's good in the world. Well, wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> that's, that's quite the compliment for this bite. Um, I mean, the, the breakfast there is our most favorite thing to prepare. Um, what we really want to do, first of all, is serve this, this really kind of opulent Emilia Romagna style breakfast um, that they call here actually is like merenda estiva, which is, you know, like the summer snack. So oh. traditionally in, in these agricultural lands, you'll have a lot of the farmers are waking up at the crack of dawn, having what would be their coffee and their sweet breakfast at that time. They'll go work in the farm on the fields for hours. And then by the time they kind of come back in mid morning, um, they're ready for something more hearty. They're ready for something um, meaty um, and, um, you know, gnocco frito and maybe a little glass of lambrusco and maybe some, you know, maybe some of this cotechino sausage. Um, so that's something that, you know, using a lot of the traditional recipes, we decided to serve for breakfast um, every day. <laughs> whether we're got, in the fields farming or not um, and, you've, and you've created this incredible like it's like an overflowing of corn like a cornucopia overflowing yeah i mean it's it's really great what we have on the property which is the one thing that inspired a lot of the approaches to the recipes is this beautiful wood fire oven um which is my baby uh and i believe i, I met you at that wood fire oven i have a picture of you at that wood fire oven yeah it is where i spend all day every day and i would you know spend even more time there if i could um it's a gorgeous oven completely um wood fired so i even you know bring in 
um, the best three, you know, three different types of wood up from the Apennines so that we get like the proper, perfect cooking of everything that we're making in there from this Cotechino sausage that you had um, to the sbrizolona, which is the sweet almond cookie at the base of the dish. But even the focaccias, the herb pies, everything that you have at breakfast um, is being baked in that oven. So um, it really is, you know, becomes really special you know you wake up in the countryside you go outdoors you see this you know very kind of famous um mud in a fog kind of covering the fields around you and you smell the wood burning in the oven and i just think that it's the most beautiful ex country experience you know so that is um i think you know gives it that that real different touch um, of the bite of the bite that you had. Um, so, so tell me a little bit about this, you know, trifecta of, and, and can you explain? So we, we talked that the sprisolona is the almond kind of cr hardish, crumblish cookie. Cookie. But can you yeah. tell everybody what the, what the cotechino is and the zabaglione? Sure. So um, it's actually um, the cotechino sausage, which we keep bringing up, um, is a very traditional uh, pork sausage. It's actually quite large, um, made here in the province of Modena, more specifically in Mirandola, um, which is about 30 kilometers away from downtown Modena. I um, mean, they've been making it since the beginning of the 16th century. Um, wow. It's made out of a combination of pork meat, um, uh, um, fat back, um, and pork rind, so pork skin. Um, that kind of all gets ground up and gets put into this casing. Now, traditionally, the sausage is um, steamed and served or with, you know, lentils and pureed potatoes, um, or actually very traditionally um, in a dish called zampone, which means that you're basically stuffing this sausage into a pig's foot, um, which is crazy. <laughs> so um, definitely you can find this dish just repeating itself over uh, the last 500 years of gastronomic history. Um, and so when we started uh, looking at it, you know, I said, okay, it's great, but this sausage steamed is like not, you know, it, it's not saying breakfast. So it goes into the oven and it just gets slow roasted and smoked. Um, it's being smoked for about an hour. I would say an hour as everything else is going in and getting baked in the oven. It's getting smoked, just sitting in the back, right in the ash of the fire um, and mm. taking on re that, that real flavor, that really smoky flavor um, and getting that nice crust on the outside and still being really nice and soft on the inside. I'm slowly so crying as you tell yes. <laughs> me. I know this is when I feel like, you know, in the movie Hook, where all of the kids are sitting around the table and eating the invisible food, you know? This yes, is, exactly. I feel, I feel like that right now too. I'm, I'm, um, I'm, I'm slowly then, eating mine right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so this sausage gets, you know, you get a nice thick slice of this sausage um, placed on top of this brizolona cookie. This brizolona cookie is um, like kind of a real sable style cookie, um, but we leave it really chunky so that it kind of crumbles. Um, and it's typically from the north of Italy. And what they usually do with this kind of sweet and salty cookie is they dip it into fortified wine or grappa and it's just eaten like that traditionally we put it under the sausage because we're crazy um and we just wanted to add it that kind of like sweet and salty element to it um you know almost like pouring maple syrup on your bacon you know oh like all goodness. of those flavors kind of <laughs> yeah it just like all talks to breakfast you know the sweet with the savory with the smoky um and then zabayone so zabayone is um basically whipped egg white uh, egg yolks pardon me um eaten all over the north um again of of italy um and we make it with marsala wine marsala wine is a fortified wine from uh sicily um, and so just putting a little drop of that, uh, you know, just to even talk about these, these, this agricultural kind of farming culture of, you know, you come in after working in the fields and it might be 10 o'clock in the morning, but it's okay to have a little bit of wine, you know, you've already worked your day. Um, and so we just put a drop of that in the Zabayone. So basically, if you want to imagine this little round cookie, a great slice of the smoked sausage, a dollop of this Zabayone with a touch of Marsala wine, and then we drizzle extra vecchio 
balsamic vinegar from Massimo's family's reserve, so from Villa Manodori. Um, extra vecchio means it's a balsamic vinegar aged over 25 years, um, and we just put a drizzle of it on top. And we decided that that would be breakfast. <laughs> and I decided that I would eat it every single day. And it is yeah. the healthy, and I've convinced myself it's the healthiest thing on earth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my exactly. goodness. But I, okay, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it. I know that that's not all that you have. I know you have amazing breads. And I know, you know, just from being in Casa Maria Luigia and in that kitchen, there are so many great things that you're, 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 you're creating every single day. And I'd love to know a little bit more about the kitchen philosophy. Um, yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, what we wanted to do at Casa Maria Luigia was create this, the typical Italian welcoming atmosphere, which isn't welcome to a hotel, but it's welcome to our home, which is we want you to wake up, come and enjoy the biggest longest breakfast of your life but then throughout the day we want you to go into the kitchen open the fridge and find it full we want you to grab a bottle of wine or of lambrusco from the wine cellar we want you to go into the music room and choose whatever record you want to listen to um, from massimo's private collection and just put it on to to, to play you know, there's libraries of books available to you. There's cocktail rooms. Um, come into the garden with us and, you know, see the vegetables that we're picking. And that's the philosophy that we have. It's just the luxury of um, total freedom. And in that house, you'll never be asked to sign a bill. You'll never be told that the kitchen is closed. You'll never be told that you can't do anything because it is typical Italian hospitality at its best. Um, and that's really what we want to communicate. So in the kitchen every day, um, using stuff from the garden that have been passed through um, the oven outdoors. I mean, we cook almost everything um, directly um, in the in the wood burning oven outside. Um, we're putting beautiful desserts, salads, um, little snacks, you know, kind of scattered all about the house. Like kind of when you go back to your parents' house after being away in university or something and you get back and you go into the kitchen and it's always full of food and that, that great feeling of being home again, you know? And, if and, if and, your parents were just Massimo and Lara. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somewhere somewhere along those lines. Um, but that's just the the welcome that we want to give people. Um, so yeah, that's uh that's so our vibe objective. Is easy, well the vibe is very, very easily transmitted. I mean, I I think the uh, most of the time that I spent when I was there was in that kitchen. Um, I think there was like some yogurt snack that I had, and my husband was obsessed with all those like one um what do they call it? The, the, um, the Lambrusco, but with the pop top that like is like one hit, not one hit, but you know what I mean? Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then it sounds like a beer shop when you say it like that. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. it's like that. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. I can't, it's not coming to my head. I mean, it was it, the whole, but it did, it felt like if my parents were like super cool and actually put like the other thing, I think like my, my mom would just like put leftovers. So you'd find like a piece of tuna fish. Right. It's right. like up right. to you to decide how to manage that. This is like, hey, if your mom and dad were like really, really thinking. <laughs> yeah, right, right. And it's of great because it, it is like, you, you know, you know, that feeling of like when you open the refrigerator and you stand in front of it, just like looking and you're like desperately trying to think of something magical to appear and it yep. doesn't. This yep. instead, you like, oh, you're like, yeah. <laughs> in this house, it appears. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I love it. Exactly. I love it. Well, I mean, it's not. And then so we do offer that like wonderful, magical, um, magical fridge experience at lunch. Um, but then at nighttime, we also um, in our old carriage space, which would be the old stable house or the carriage space of the property, which has been transformed into our dining room. Uh, we offer a beautiful, actually, uh, also dining experience where we're offering a in an open kitchen concept with sharing tables um so you know six to eight people per table nine of the most iconic courses from the history of osteria francescana so this is a three michelin star um 
dinner, but done in this really convivial, um, fun kind of way, you know, where we're offering fine dining and where we're offering kind of this time capsule into what is Osteria Franciscana, but doing it in this in this almost this revolutionary way for people who have been working in three Michelin stars and in this fine dining, which is our kitchen is totally open. Um, you, the guests are welcome to come into the kitchen and to look at what we're doing and to ask us what's happening and, um, and then sitting around the table and just meeting new people. And it's been really special, you know, to see, um, fine dining translate into this really beautiful, uh, um, you know, com- you know, more less rigid kind of dining experience where people put their phones down and, you know, they're talking and, and, um, just really, it, it's just really special as well. So that's, um, Franciscana at Maria Luigia, which we do, um, every night there as well. So lots going on. We, uh, we were lucky, my husband and I, we happened to have be part of that dinner and it was great because, you know, we're sitting at this gorgeous, long, beautiful wooden tables. I think there were eight people at our table. We met this cool couple from Canada, talked about art the entire time. But then, you know, you, you then all of a sudden at that night, it was Lara who was presenting, um, the dishes. So you're getting mm-hmm. the background story on these dishes, but as they're being made right in front of you. So it was, you know, it's, and, and everybody's chatting and talking and laughing. It was definitely, you know, as for the Michelin dinners that I've experienced, it's completely different. You know, yeah. it was so fun. I, I just felt like I could hug everyone. <laughs> And you 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 could easily like go over and talk to someone at the next table. Whereas, you know, that's not always the case in a Michelin experience. You're kind of isolated to your own table and enjoying it with the person that you're with. Whereas this was like a family experience, but a mind blowing family experience. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's back to, you know, the conversation of what is Italian hospitality, you know, and it is going to an Italian's home and, you know, like the nonna's there and welcoming you in and bringing you at the table and making you eat until you can't possibly eat anymore. And, you know, it's that it's sitting around a table for hours and hours, you know, and um, and it's almost as if that was lost for a bit and it feels like now it's all coming back. You know, and and that's, I think, the beauty of of the dinner times as well. You know, I agree. And I also I also I'm going to say I definitely think that it's part of I feel that at breakfast, Uh, I think you guys, Mm -hmm. you know, in Rome, we're not we don't have breakfast like that. We have we we just walk to the bar um, and we have a quick a quick coffee and cornetto. And at home, it's very it's it's very quick. And um, I mean, you can obviously at home have your own big breakfast, but you know, you're bringing back the celebration of this kind of family, like just the family merenda, the family meeting at the middle of the day, just to say hello in the middle of the morning, like you were saying, except you're bringing it to breakfast time. And then mm-hmm. of course you've created that trifecta of yeah. everything. I love. <laughs> well, Jess, exactly. I'm really happy to speak with you and I cannot wait to come back and you will probably see me at breakfast all day long. Oh, that's, we're waiting for you. We, we can't wait to open up again and, and um, light up that wood oven and, and start preparing that breakfast again. So we look very much forward to having you back. Well, I can't wait. And for everybody listening, um, if you click over, if you follow my, my website, there is going to be a page. There is a page already, a little blog, blog about um, Casa Maria Luigia and also about this travel bite where you'll find all the information, but it's uh, www www.casamarialuigia.com and um, I know I said that really quickly but uh, (laughs) you can also visit them on Instagram at casa, C-A-S-A, Maria M-A-R-I-A, Luigia L-U-I-G-I-A right Jessica? I spelled that correctly? Yep, (laughs) you got it I was going really fast, (laughs) I'm glad I didn't trip (laughs) it was great talking to you and um, I really look forward to seeing you in Modena Yeah, me as well. Nice talking to you too. Take care. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of Ciao Bella. If you'd like to know more about today's guest, please visit ciaobella.co and click on the podcast link or go directly to ciaobella.co backslash podcast. Want more Italy? You can find all my episodes on iTunes and Spotify and Stitcher. When you have time, subscribe to iTunes and rate the podcast. What are you waiting for? And if you want to be part of the podcast, email me or DM me your Italy questions. To learn more about me and my work, go to my website, ericafirpo.com, and follow my Italy adventures on Instagram at ericafirpo.
Ciao, Bella. And a very big thank you and hug to Massimiliano Yonta and Disc to Disc Studios, the producers of Ciao, Bella, who continue to make me sound and feel great. 